understandable. Can you can you talk a little bit about ordinary life in a sub? What it's like, uh, uh, the conditions, the food, sleeping. What, oh, the, uh, talk the, about life in the sub. I'm fascinated by this. Well, your your food is probably the best. We had steaks and hams as, as long as the supply lasts. After the after the supply runs out, if your patrol lasts too long, then you're digging out the canned tuna and the canned goods from behind the airlines and stuff like that. But we had frozen, we had a freezer on board. Huh? We had a uh, baker that baked every night. We had fresh bread every night. And, uh, well, you, it's it's air conditioned normally, so it's rather comfortable. When you're submerged too long, the air gets kind of uh, bad to where you can't, I remember they allow a smoking lamp every two hours, and it got so bad, to show you how stupid people are, the air got so bad you couldn't light a lighter because the flame wouldn't flame, so they had little electric lighters to light your cigarettes with, and the air was so bad that you... <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, uh, well, we like one half run, uh, everybody got to take a turn to either mess cook or, uh, or uh, washing machine. I had the washing machine half of the second run. It was good duty because they everybody paid in fifty cents a week for the laundry, and half of it went to the ship's fund, and half went to the guy doing the washing. So I got extra pay for doing it, and that was the only duty I had. I just all night long I'd wash clothes. I'd get one washing machine full of fresh water because fresh water was that was really uh, uh, premium, create uh, something that you had to take care of on a submarine because those batteries had to have fresh water. And they got first priority. Now, would you produce your own fresh water? Or was yeah, we had stills on them. Oh, okay, okay. This is why we may, uh, took and boiled the uh, seawater and got fresh water. It was good enough to put in the batteries. Okay. But then we had drinking water and cooking water. But for showers, we used to just get the condensation water from the air conditioner. We'd get a half a bucket. So we'd take our washcloth, get ourselves a little wet, and then we'd soap it soap ourselves down and use the rest of the water for rinse. Huh. We get that twice a week. And uh, But anyway, I used to get a uh, uh, washing machine full of fresh water, and uh, then I'd use the uh, condensating water for, uh, for rinse. But I'd wash all the clothes first, put it in the sink, then I'd drain the soapy water and put it in rinse water, and then rinse it, and that's the only way you could do it. Had, but your clothes, they weren't perfect, but they were pretty decent. Then I'd take them in the engine room and hang them on the rails alongside the engines to dry, you know. And I'd, like, I'd wash the forward torpedo room one night, after torpedo room another night, the after battery where the crew lived, uh, also part of the crew lived another night. Then I'd wash the officers and chiefs another night, and uh, then I had the bedding that I'd wa wash on a certain night. I don't remember just what the schedule is anymore, but it was all worked out. And uh, then they had guys doing mess cooking, they had two of the greener guys on the submarine that would uh, uh, wash dishes and, and set up the tables and peel the potatoes. That's, uh, towards the end of the run, we'd be out of, you see, when you went out to sea, you had a pretty good supply of fresh milk and fresh vegetables, but after four or five days, that was all gone, so you were out of, you were on powdered milk. Fortunately, on submarine, we did have the soft ice cream maker. You know, exactly. that right. soft uh, like Dairy Queen. Uh -huh. We were the ones. The they were the first ones to get that during the war. The submarines, and our skipper was a ice cream hound, so we had plenty of ice cream powder on board. We dumped the powder in water and mixed it. And uh, I can remember after the war, we were uh, we went to Guam. I didn't get out until January until uh, uh, February of '44. I didn't have enough points. So I had to stay with I stayed with the Blenny, and we went from uh, we didn't come back to the states. We went to Guam, and we made a trip down to Man down to the uh, Manus Islands down to uh, well Manus Islands, and then back up just a kind of a goodwill trip, a training trip, back to Guam. And we didn't leave Guam until the middle of uh, July January, and come back to San Diego at the end of January, and on the 15th of January, I left for discharge at St. Louis, and I was discharged February 22nd. Of uh, 46? Of 46. Okay. Uh -huh. But uh, I can remember when I was in Guam, my cousin's husband was uh, 
a chaplain's assistant in the Navy, and he was there at Guam, and he found out the Blenny was in, so he came down to see me. Is that right? And uh, poor old Pete was on K rations and C rations for so long, he didn't know what real food was. So I says, uh, can you stay for lunch? He says, sure. So I told Lynn to cook. I says, I'm going to have a guest. Well, we had fried chicken and all the fixings and ice cream and apple pie. And it got to a point where the guys quit eating, uh, submariners quit eating, and they were watching Pete eat because he, he hadn't seen real food for so long. He, he just dove in. I think he had th uh, probably half a chicken him or <laughs> most of a chicken himself. And, and boy, he, he really uh, celebrated it. And when I got back home, the only first thing I heard is, he tells us you guys really eat well. <laughs> <laughs> how, how big was the crew on? Uh, there was uh, 73 enlisted men and eight officers. And, and I, I, I'm still going back to conditions on the, on the ship. I, I'm just fascinated yeah. by this. I mean, yeah. did you feel crowded? I mean, was it... Uh, well, you, you, you didn't have a place to dance, but you did get around. I mean, uh, do you do any traveling ever? Yeah. Do you ever get up in the Wisconsin area? I've never. That's one part of the country I've never been. If you ever yeah. get up to Manitowoc, there's a fleet boat in the in the condition of a regular sailing boat. It's ready to go to sea. That's one that you can go aboard and see what it's like. But uh, <clears throat> it's 308 feet long, 24 foot wide, and then you got these saddle tanks in that 24. That's included in that 24 feet. So you got the inner hull, which is the round sewer pipe, I call it. And then you got these saddle tanks around the side of it that makes the 24 feet. Well, so inside you probably, probably the width of that dining room would be 12, 14 feet maybe. But uh, in the forward torpedo room, you've got uh, 24 torpedoes. You've got six tor torpedoes in the tubes. You don't have 24 in the forward torpedo room. You have six torpedoes in the, uh, in the tubes and 10 reloads. It's... At 16 torpedoes, four, and then you carry eight aft. So we had 24 torpedoes. But our bunks were right alongside the torpedoes going from top uh, on up. They had some slid out from under the torpedo racks, and they had two of those, two, four, six, eight. They had eight of those up front in the forward torpedo room. Then we had two, two, three, four, five, six. We had, uh, it was either six or eight bunks above the torpedoes. I guess it was eight bunks above the torpedo. My tor my bunk most of the time was above the floor to above the torpedo on the starboard side or above the above the, uh, the, the, the explosive head there, the head of the torpedo. Uh, that was a good Tell bunk. Tell me about that fan. Oh, we had fans at the base of our bunks to circulate a little bit, little fans, and I used to stick my a restless sleeper. I used to stick my bunk uh, my toes in the fan. I had black toes. <laughs> oh, geez. And another thing I. would I'd uh, hit my arms on the cork bulkhead and end up with skin to elbows, you know, but ah, that's part of living. And then the officer's quarters, they had their boardroom, they had uh, their, there was bunk space for eight, eight of them. And uh, then the chief's quarters was in the part of in the uh, forward battery also, and they, they had room for six or eight chiefs. I don't think we had that many chiefs, so we, a couple of first class were allowed to sleep in there. Then the after battery, there was room for three, six, nine, twelve, twenty-four, uh, twenty-four, three, six, nine, eighteen. Uh, twenty-four to eighteen, that'd be forty-three, right? Uh, Forty-two. Uh, room for 42 in the after battery and there's room for a few more to sleep in the after, the after torpedo room. Hmm. Then you had two engine, well, the, uh, the, uh, the control room, that after part of the control room, there was a little cubicle, that's where the radio shack was. And right on the other side in the next compartment was the kitchen, the galley. And we had room to seat uh, 6, 8, 12, 24, no, 6, 12, 24 people could eat at one time, so there were... Eat in shifts. Yeah, then. there yeah. were at least three shifts in the, of the cruise mess. Uh, for the crew, the officers had two uh, stewards mates that used to come back, get, our, get the food from our kitchen, and they'd take it up and then they'd serve it on 
we, well, we had plates. We, I'll tell you one thing about submarines. Uh, I can remember the first morning I was on a submarine, I, I come in to eat breakfast and the cook asked me how I wanted my eggs and I thought, oh, who's pulling my leg here? <laughs> and so I said, well, sunny side up, by God, that's the way I got Is that it. Right, I mean, yeah. it, it was just, it was good food and you got it the way you wanted it. And breakfast was pretty much served uh, if they were having eggs, you get your eggs fried the way, but you had the rest of the meal that was set up beforehand. And uh, then in the after the, after the crew quarters, you had your shower on one side and two heads on the other side. And uh, then after the, after that, you had the two engine rooms, and then you had the maneuvering room. That's where they had the controllers for controlling the speed of the ship and. And uh, down in the lower portion was where they had the four main motors. You see, when your submarine was propelled by four diesel engines that turned four generators, and the generators went to a box, the electricity went to a box that you could either put it straight to propulsion, well, you had to put it to the engines. I'm getting, uh, w uh, you could either put it to the batteries to charge your batteries from the engines, these generators, or you could put it to the uh, motors, and the motors had reduction gears with the props, two, uh, two screws and sticking out the back. Now, we had an auxiliary diesel underneath the deck of the after engine room. Oftentimes, if we were trying to get uh, charged at night, we would uh, put two engines on propulsion, or maybe one engine on propulsion, and two engines on charge and uh, if we were chasing somebody at four using all four engines we would use that auxiliary to carry a zero float in our batteries to, to put, keep our batteries up as we were going so we wouldn't draw any so we had full batteries when we hmm. submerged but those engines had to be run from those generators you know, those motors had to be run from those generators and uh, then you had the after torpedo room had four torpedoes aft the quarters weren't big. If you have four torpedo room, four battery control room, uh, after battery, two engine rooms, the maneuvering room, that's eight compartments in 300 yeah, and eight right, feet. Yeah, right, right. You're getting down pretty short on your length of your compartments. Did, did uh, claustrophobia ever play into you at all? or? Uh... It never did then, but I don't think I could hack it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 